So the past couple of sections we've been talking about polynomial functions and now we're going to turn our focus to rational functions and their graphs. Now we studied polynomial functions because a rational function is really just the ratio of polynomial functions. In other words, I have some sort of polynomial function in the numerator and a different polynomial function in the denominator creating a ratio of the two polynomials. So here's a couple of examples of when you of what uh, Poly, uh, rational functions might look like. Let me show you the graph of a rational function though. You might be familiar with this. This, uh, this graph right here, the graph that you are familiar with maybe for a rational function has um, a function coming in and it looks like it's approaching some sort of imaginary line and then it picks up again here on the other side of that line and goes on. Now if you remember, maybe, this imaginary vertical line is what we call an asymptote. So the graph of my rational function is going to approach that asymptote, but it's never actually going to touch it, and then it picks up on the other side and moves on. Now the reason for that is because uh, because we're talking about ra a ratio, or in other words, a fraction, we know from the early days of learning fractions that you're not allowed to have a zero in the denominator. Well, an asymptote is one of those places where we have a zero occurring. So formally, we can define a rational function as the ratio of some polynomial p of x divided by a different polynomial q of x, where my function q of x or polynomial q of x is not a zero polynomial. So we just know that we're not allowed to have zeros in the denominator of a fraction, and that's, that's how we uh, handle this. Now, in this particular video, we are going to focus on the domain of a rational function. So again, the domain are, when we're talking about the domain, we're talking about x values. So what values of x are allowed in my domain for my rational function. When we think about uh, rational functions, we really are only concerned with where the denominator is going to be equal to zero, and so that's how we approach uh, talking about the domain. So I have three examples we're going to look at. The first one is for, uh, written for you right here. r of x is equal to x divided by x cubed minus 8. Since I'm only concerned with the values for x that cause the denominator to be equal to 0, I'm going to take the denominator and I'm going to set it equal to 0. So I have x cubed minus 8 equals 0. I'm going to add 8 to the right hand side. Then I'm going to take the cubed root of both sides because the cubed root of x cubed is simply x and the cubed root of 8 is 2. So in other words, if I were to plug in 2 for x, raise it to the third power, that would be 8 minus 8 gives me 0. This is the one number out of the entire number line uh, on the x-axis that is going to cause the denominator to be equal to 0, so it's the number that I throw out. So I'm going to write the domain so that it, in set notation, so I have my set bars here, x such that x cannot be equal to that 2. And that's the domain of this function. Now let's look at another one. Here I have the rational function h, h of x is equal to x minus 3 divided by x to the fourth plus 1. Since I'm concerned with where the denominator is equal to 0, I take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 1 to the right hand side, x to the fourth is equal to negative 1, and I would come in here and I would take the fourth root of both sides. But before you do that, you want to ask yourself, can I take the fourth root of a negative number? It's the same concept as if I'm going to take the square root of a negative number. When I take the square root of a negative number, I get back an imaginary value. So anytime I take the even root of a negative number, I'm going to get an imaginary value. So in other words, this is telling me that I cannot take the fourth root of negative 1. That means that the domain for this function is all real numbers. Or from negative to positive infinity if we wanted to write it that way.
And you can kind of check that by coming back here and thinking about this. Is there ever going to be a number that I can substitute in for x and get 0? If I plug in negative values for x, raise them to the fourth power, I get back positive values. So a positive value plus 1 is still positive, not 0. If I plug 0 in, raise it to the fourth power, and add 1, I'm still not at 0. And then if I plug in positive 1, uh, or positive values, I mean, raise them to the fourth power, and add 1 to that, I am still not 0. So there are no numbers that are going to cause the denominator of this rational function to be 0, so it's all real numbers for the domain. Okay, the last one we're going to look at is this one right here. g of x is equal to negative 2 times that divided by 3 times that trinomial there. Again, if we are only concerned with where the denominator is equal to 0, I'm going to take this denominator and I'm going to set it equal to 0 and solve. I can divide off a 3 and all I'm interested in or all I'm left with then is this trinomial here, x squared plus 4x plus 4 that I now need to factor. So I can come in here, set this equal to 0. I hope you're starting to see that this trinomial right here, the first term is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, so this is one of our special case trinomials. In other words, it is x plus 2 quantity squared. Okay, so I can take the square root of both sides, leaving me with just this part, x plus 2 equals 0. Now I can subtract 2 to the right hand side and I find out that negative 2, uh, x is equal to negative 2. So if I were to plug a negative 2 in for x up here in my rational function, it's the one number that's going to cause the denominator to be equal to 0, so it's the value that I throw out. So the domain of this function says x such that x cannot be equal to negative 2. And let's surround it with our set bars. And that's how we're going to take the denominator, set it equal to 0, for us to be able to figure out what the domain of a function is.